There would be nothing wrong if I said that Meghan is the most hated bride in the history of the British royal family, at least up to now. Each person has their personality, I respect that, but at least their personality must also respect those around them. Meehan cannot do that. She is a narcissist, ambitious, and self-centered. We see that Meghan is never satisfied with being overshadowed. She wants to be at the top of every headline. That's why she always has despicable tricks to plead for the world's attention. Welcome back to the Royal News 365 channel, where all of your snarkiest dreams come true as I share my deepest, scathingest thoughts about the dull Duchess and her handbag herald. Are you curious about public opinion on Meghan? With every action she and Harry take, their reputation sinks and public opinion diminishes. We hear about their plans for a wonderful future, their next new thing, the one that is going to make their fortune. And to be honest, if they're really lucky, one of their harebrained ideas may work. I don't believe they can redeem themselves to those members of the public who have watched their behavior over the past years. You see, at first many thought as I did. Cheerful chappy Harry had, at last, found someone who cared for him enough to agree to spend the rest of her life with him as a working member of the royal family. Prepared to give up her life as an actress and instead be by Harry's side, supporting him in his engagements and, eventually, having patronages of her own. Well, warning bells sounded when we became aware of her relationship with her own family, then various reports bubbled around, partly under the surface, but we were aware of them difficult, demanding, etc. There was that terrible engagement interview when Megan was trying to play the ingenue and failing dismally. The wedding, Charles 70, their birthday garden party, the tour of Australia, bullying of staff, the list goes on. Then the Archie debacle when due, not interested in using royal doctors, wouldn't say where the baby was to be born, not being seen with the baby outside the hospital, and so on. Playing games with the public and many didn't like it. And only one photo of Archie since in Canada, by a lake, in Harry's arms. We hadn't seen him before, and no photos since have actually proved Archie's existence. Now, there is the launch of the new website, which is to record all the doings of the Harkles. I wonder if children will appear. A video blog, perhaps. A version of the TIG? I'm sure Meghan is desperate to get sponsorship and make money from it. Prince and Princess of Wales recently pronounced themselves the Wales family in their official press release. Then here comes the Montecito Circus. We are now the Suessex family. Poor Meghan! Poor, poor Harry! They always running after their idols and trying so hard to reach, to emulate, to compete with the future king and queen. It would be funny if it was not so depressing to watch. It seems that, once again, Harry and Meghan are proving they can dish it out, but can never take the pressure they put the Wales family under. The irony is not lost on me that for all they want the world to see them as royalty and overuse their titles and royal affiliation for it, Harry and Meghan only act with the crass vulgarity befitting two insecure narcissists Harry and Meghan still have not figured out that it is not titles that make William and Catherine the very popular and respected royals they are. It is their innate class and genuine nature that always shine through their actions and words. It is the dignified way they always keep calm and carry on. It is in the way they always walk their talk while maintaining their mystique. That brand of royalty is what people admire and are fascinated about. Not the crass nouveau riche, and in your face celebrity wannabe royals Harry and Meghan offer. An unmarried Harry used to be of Wales, as that was his father's surname. When he married, he lost the of Wales to replace it with of Sussex in that he followed his older brother. His older brother had had a few changes, adding of Cornwall to the of Cambridge and more recently of Wales, with the more senior being used over time. Harry resigned from the working royal family, 
but his copycat approach used before still seems to remain. Perhaps unconscious admiration for his elder brother? Or a childish, I am just as good as you? While a current royal who is working for the family uses their titles, the non-working royals use either Windsor or, after the old Duke of Edinburgh, Philip complained, the newer Mountbatten Windsor surname. As their common surname, I thought that Harry had agreed to the Mountbatten Windsor surname, as he is now an ex-royal, as many are referring to him. The reference to his royal title after his resignation does seem to hint at desperation, a longing for times long gone, or an attempt to retain an old link that for him did have significance. Perhaps Meghan and Harry understand that no one will care about them if they no longer have any ties to the royal family. So, they cling to this title. Do you find it strange that they announced site improvements and surname changes at this time? This is not a quick job. It was definitely planned and prepared just like filming a movie. Thus, we come to the great filming over. Many layers of it. It masquerades as being over the topness and oh so secret. Why am I seeing this image in my mind's eye? The Miguelier with a shushing finger to her lips as she did at the palace window. What a joke! What's so secret about a secret that's been secreted out by the secret holder and schemer who is well known for releasing secrets to be well known for having a secret that is now common knowledge? Hey, we have it now from an insider source that we've been let in on a secret. Ho, the witch, Megan. Yeah, don't say. You gave away your secret to a source close to you, but it was supposed to be a secret, and thus you intended to remove the secrecy by revealing it to a source. This, my friends, is the great filming over. The layers of convoluted conspiracy and chicanery that try to obscure what happened last in their filmed plotline. That's how their PR works. It's a headless horse, cracked Turnip, and layers of film celluloid strips, each frame having molt layers of other film strips underneath. The image looks darkened and opaque with many superimpositions, but it's the same dumb actors, the same dumb plot lines, the same crass reality show drama, the same cheesy soap opera. We can pull out frames from underneath for closer inspection against the daylight. We can see episodes from their past and be reminded that, yup, they've been there and done that again and again. Just that the cosplaying or the tanning bronzer might provide some remarkable variations or Harry's grooming and sartorial slovenliness is at least consistent. Thus, we come to what may be the greatest filming over ever. Yes, folks, the remorphing of Archiwell to their new website is another dude that they are pulling off in the hopes that we, the viewing public, will be pleased and get more bang for our buck for getting their past grand failures when in reality this gift that keeps on giving is buttering and salting my popcorn. How about you? They say that their surname is now Sussex, that they own the name, and that they've renamed their invisible kids with the Sussex surname. Rubbish! They don't own a title! They don't own Sussex, and their surnames remain Windsor. I live in Edmonton. By default, I'm an Edmontonian. But it isn't my surname. But now we must refer to the kids as Archie and Lily Sussex or themselves as Harry and Meghan Sussex, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, so that there's no mistaking it, they are Sussex of Sussex. More like Succus of Succotash. It's a fart fest. Just kidding. Seems silly. Why not Harry and Meghan Dumbarton? Oh, that's right. She that hisses and licks her fangs didn't like the dumb part and so totally disowned that one. Well, why not Kilkeel? Remember, Harry is Baron of Kilkeel, the barony having been specially created for him by his grandmother, her late majesty, the queen. So, do we actually care if the Harkles want to change their kids' names from Mountbatten-Windsor to Smith? 
No, why not? It's a good solid name. After all, millions of people already have it, and it's a step further into making them commoners, which they already are, and they can go incognito, without press intrusion. Mr. and Mrs. Smith even better wink, wink. Ha ha! Seriously, though, have you ever known a man who wants to give up his prided family name? No, me neither. It's just another step away from the royal shackles that bind them, to a name that has given them nothing but grief. Oh, the power to make money by trading on it. Well, that's neither here nor there. Why shouldn't they? Oh, it's the German connotation. Oh, well, Smith can be turned into Smith. Seriously, though, it's quite poignant that to Prince Philip, who was devastated to not be able to give his children his surname, the Queen, had it added to Windsor. That's love! Let's just do away with the prince and princess bullshit and send the lot of them to Siberia. What do you think? My sympathies to the good people of Sussex, who find the name of their home and local hijacked by a lying pair of useless gifts, all for the vanities of money-making, self-aggrandizement, and fame. Their brand has been nothing but facade managing, fakery PR virtue signaling, cosplaying, victimhood, whining, and incessant attacks upon the royals and the institution of monarchy. They keep on weaponizing the ist word and throwing it around with alarming alacrity. They still keep on grifting, lying, and playing games of deceit and dishonesty. Is there anything this couple does that is on the straight and narrow? When was the last time the pair of them did something honest and truthful? I can't think of any. That's why I say we are seeing the great filming over with this much vaunted and trumpeted website they've come up with. It's just another serving of grift. It's just more bullshit parfait with whipped cream and a cherry on top. It's not even new. Let's just pull out a few frames from underneath the celluloid. Oh, here's a frame. Remember the being on the verge of signing a huge deal with Dior or this one, the set to be returning to acting in a Suits reboot set o coaster opposite Kevin Costner in his new movie or this witch? Set to star in and direct the next Netflix project, see what I mean? It's not new. And I'm not surprised. It's predictably boring and bound to be another colossal failure. But hey, it's still entertaining and just another filming over. One thing I will say is Meghan and Harry never learn their lessons. They never profit from their mistakes, and they are stuck on repeat. Did they ever consider trying to do something honest, sincere, selfless, and above board? No, they recycle their grifting ways, all for the vanities of appeasing their overinflated egos and feeding their narc malice. This couple's mendacity knows no bounds. They will never be king and queen. Americans are not even lukewarm to the idea of having stateside faux royals. Their titles are meaningless outside the firm. It's the equivalent of going to the dollar store and getting some cheap plastic knockoffs of tiaras and bottles of glitter paint. To themselves, they're simply fabulous and important people. To us, they are cardboard cutouts with attached balloons. I think I just another big build-up for yet another boring failure. There will be the same old crowd who run out to watch, read, or partake of it, and quickly see they wasted their time and money. Then they'll want to purge themselves and their households of such garbage by leaving it on somebody's doorstep or in hotel lobbies for others to have to dispose of. A dump run, as we used to say, when cleaning out the garage of useless junk. All the titillating nuggets dropped for months ahead of time. Surely we all know the routine by now. What is amusing is the skank of Hank put out one of her word salads heaping piles of praise on her team who has helped them launch their website. They're talented, with vision, amongst other glowing, sugar-laden praises. Yet I can't look past the failure of Archuel, the defunct Tig that was unknown until she shoved her way into the royal family and the charities blanketed in scandal and hypocrisy. About invidious Canada, we don't want them. Hopefully, protests will happen. 
Can the plane divert? Like one plane crash away? Megan's sticky giant claws are everywhere, aren't they? Riding off the back of cooperate techs that couldn't give two shits what she say. Do you remember she terrorizes and threatens to abuse anyone who talks shit about her? There is nothing original about her. It's all stolen. Invictus, shame on you for allowing these two to represent your foundation. Harry and Meghan only care about gaining information about royals so they can cash in on their association with them. Everything they touch turns to poison. They won't last. They need the royals. The royal family doesn't need them. They should be stripped of their titles. Seeing as they don't like the monarchy, it would be the kindest thing to do to the self-absorbed, entitled hypocrites. Not like Prince of Wales. Prince William is doing the job he has been raised to do and is doing it well. He cares about his country and the Commonwealth. Just Harry and his wife chose to walk away from a guaranteed job for life to live their own lives. If they wanted to be guardians to rule human beings, they've gone the wrong way about it. I repeat, just Harry chose to leave the firm. He is no longer a working royal. He is no longer representing the family. Both Meghan and Harry have to keep changing their hangers on to maintain the adulation they receive having cut off nearly everybody who has boosted them in the past other than the creep scoby. The awards they accept become increasingly meaningless. And frankly, if the royal family above Harry in the succession were tragically lost, I doubt the people and the government of whatever hue would accept these reprobates to reign. As for Meghan, there are very few people who like her. For the rest, we dislike Meghan. I have to say that I don't hate her. That requires too much energy. However, who likes anyone who denigrates her own family and the family she married into, and who did nothing but welcome and try to protect her? She is ungrateful for everything she was given during her period as a working royal because, in my opinion, she has a spiteful and malicious heart. And yet, she is still trading on the fact that she has married into the royal family and is still using the title given to her by one of the people she most despised, Her Majesty the Late Queen. What she has done, and is still doing, is trade on the good nature of Harry's family and encourage Harry to behave as she does. She boasts she has not signed any non-disclosure agreement so can say anything she wishes and threatens to write a me 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 memoir. Trouble with that is that she lies all the time. In fact, she boasts about lying and claims to be such a fraud. Why should anyone believe a word that comes out of her mouth or she puts it on paper? And to get it published, she needs to find a publisher if she finds one. I hope they have good lawyers. Megan, it seems, has no friends, and that in itself is suspicious. My wise grandmother always told me never to trust a woman without long-standing friends. They would never have your best interests at heart, only their own. To me, at least, that sums Megan up, and that's why I believe many people dislike her. As for Harry, the story goes that his book was a success, but I haven't noticed a paperback version yet. It's certainly been the most read and left behind book and the story goes when he stayed at the posh hotel in London, when he flew over to visit his father, he didn't leave any money for the staff who had looked after him, but instead left seven copies of spares. Okay, I watched Harry on Good Morning America and here's the outcome. This interview is all about just Harry. He is pushing his legacy. This is so very important to just Harry. Yes. The games are so important to him, helping the wounded, giving them something to train and look forward to. He also is taking credit for bringing the Invictus Games to veterans, which we know is a porky king. Charles came up with this and started the wheels turning to give Harry something to do. In the interview, he wanted to highlight that the Invictus Games will be his legacy and how important they are to him. Just a brief mention of his father, but this was all about Harry to be sure. It's just all about him, period. It was a fluffy nut or nothing. He was first plugging himself, and then the legacy he will leave behind. I don't know how this guy keeps going and thinking he is just such a hero. A hero sandwich may be made with bologna. It was a fluff piece with the hook, 
that just Harry was giving an update on his dad. The king got three sentences. The more I watch this, the sicker it gets. Rebranding? Rebranding of what? Harry is the lowest of the low still making money off his family. He is morally bankrupt and he has no honor. Honestly, I have no idea how they just keep going. At that time, he did not give any secrets away. He just used the royal family again to get attention. In a nutshell, they have nothing they know nothing, and they use the royal family as clickbait for attention. Rebranding is what a commercial company does when its products are old and tired, not selling or making a profit. Isn't that exactly what the Sussex is doing? old hat, tired? No one is interested anymore, and mega money deals are no longer on the table. Speaking of huge deals, do you remember this duo's lucrative contract with Spotify that was cut last year? Now it seems they are looking for a new ally to continue their unfinished podcast series, which they only produced eight episodes of last year. Spotify, having realized the few podcasts dragged out of the reluctant Duchess, were only tenuously linked to interests Megan had for anything beyond the sound of her voice, and weighing up the cost of full staffing, even more of her guff, in the hope she might produce something. Hell, anything! Decided that no matter how much money they threw into the archetype project, the podcast of somebody opening and slowly munching a packet of cheese and onion crisps would always trump her whining to the top of the Spotify charts. So they dumped her. Spurred on by inflated viewing figures and hype produced by Spotify in an attempt to big up the rather flatulent archetypes, in an attempt to recoup some of their losses, Megan has been left with a longing to broadcast even more of her vacuous opinions as she still labors under the belief such things showcase her vivacious intelligence. I can't believe that any production company would associate with these two after Spotify's boss slammed them. I doubt that any company has seen any return financially once Harry and Meghan have become involved. It seems like Lemonada is trying to play with fire. Lemonada, whoever these poor saps are, has agreed to redistribute the original Archetypes podcasts under their umbrella on the understanding that there will be more in the pipeline. It might take them a while and a few million dollars before they realize that they are being had over. It's the same scam she used with Spotify. The bubonic plagiarist is to date, the kiss of death to everything she casts her shadow on. In the end, real trash can be recycled, but trashy PR tricks can't. There's more to this world than what invisible children's last names are or what Megan's podcast will lie about. One day this grinding duo will sink into oblivion and that will be a happy ending for them. And you? What do you think about these despicable tricks? Please join the discussion with us by commenting. If you like our videos, don't hesitate to like and share so YouTube can recommend similar videos for you. Please subscribe to help us build a more developed Royal News 365 channel. Thanks for watching. We will return in the next videos. Goodbye!